Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 129. Today's guest is a veteran actress of stage and screen. She won a Tony Award in 2008 for best performance by a featured actress in a play. You know her from Mom, How We Roll, and Mike and Molly. And of course, she played Mary in the season six Seinfeld episode, The Kiss Hello. Please welcome Rondi Reed. Rondi, thanks for joining. Thanks. Nice to be here. Rondi, take us back. 27 years ago. Can you believe it? The yeah, Kiss Hello sadly. aired on, on NBC February of 95. You um, guys weren't even born. <laughs> uh, no, I've, listen, I remember watching that episode live, but um, great episode, season six, you know, the, the pinnacle of Seinfeld, essentially. How did how the role of Mary come about? Obviously, you had a great career up until then, but tell us a little bit about how the uh, how the role came about. Was there an audition pro- process? What do you what do you remember? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was out here now. I, I mean, I lived in Chicago for like almost forty years, so I would go back and forth to L.A., Chicago, New York, depending on whatever I was doing. And um, this was uh, I was doing Steve Martin's play out here in LA, Picasso at the La Pana Gilles. And um, my agent uh, called me and said, okay, you got to drive over the hill. That's what they say in LA, drive over the hill because I was over on the west side, over by UCLA, which was where the theater was. Drive over the hill, get over there. You've got an audition for Seinfeld, which it couldn't have been an any bigger audition at the time. And I was like, Seinfeld? Oh my God. And I said, Well, is there a script? Is there this? And you know, this is way before any of this technology that we now have. He said, Yeah, 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 just go, just get in the car and go. They'll give it to you when you get there. And I was like, Okay. And as I started to drive over the hill, the skies opened up and it doesn't rain like this in L.A. anymore. But I've been in rain out here in L.A. that is in a rain solid for and it was drenching, drenching. So I'm in the car and I knew where I was going. It was the Radford lot, which is over on Radford Avenue in the valley. I had shot Roseanne there, which was the first TV gig I ever had. So um, I pull up to the gate and I'm like, hi, I'm here for my Seinfeld audition. And he goes, yeah, you need to go down there like four blocks and park. And I was like, in the rain? He went, that's right. These guys, you know, they don't care. And so I was like, great. And thank God I bought, brought an umbrella because, I mean, I, you know, I don't always carry an umbrella in LA. And so I schlep all the way up. I'm drenched anyway. I go back to where I'm supposed to go, which is like a few buildings back into the lot itself. It's not a huge lot. And I walk in and it's um, it was a casting office that had two levels to it and kind of big. I had never been there before. I was like, wow, this is big. And I went up to the second floor and there must have been, I don't know, 75 people. And I was like, oh, my. And everybody was drenched and everybody was reading and walking around, muttering to themselves. And so I signed in, which is what we used to do back in the day. And the casting assistant came out and said, OK, Rondi, here's your script. Handed me like, I don't know, three or four pages. I went, OK, great. Take your time. And I sat down and I literally read through it once. And they came back out and said, OK, you're up. And I was like, okay. Um, It was like being launched out of a cannonball or something. And I walk in and, you know, there must have been, which is always how these used to work. You look around the room and there's a semicircle of probably 15 people. And I was like, hi, hi. Oh, the casting. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, hi. Because there was Jerry and it never even crossed my mind because they said it'll be for producer, you go direct to producer, and they know you're doing Steve Martin's play and blah, 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 and all this. And But I was so shocked to see him, like Jerry, 
I was like, oh, hi. And he laughed, I think. And then uh, they said, okay, let's do the scene. And I read the scene with the casting director, who was a lovely guy. He had had me in for several things before, a really nice guy. And I read with him and they laughed. Mark, Hirsch Mark Hirschfeld, I yes, believe Mark it. Hirschfeld, great, great guy. And so supportive of actors and really wonderful. And, you know, it seemed like I was in there all of about 17 seconds. And, you know, and they laughed and everything else. And I watched walked out and I, I walked out. Everybody kind of looked at me like, why'd she get to go in before all of us, you know? Um, so I walked down to my car, went the four blocks, still in the pouring rain, went back over the hill and um, did my Steve Martin show that night. And the agents called me and they said, you booked it. I was like, what? They go, yeah, you booked it. I was like, I booked it. And at that point, boys, I'll confess, I had never watched a single Seinfeld episode. Wow. This is season six, right? This is yeah, season six. I did theater. I did mm. plays. I, yeah. I never had not. And that's before a lot of DVD, VCR. All right, that. right. So I never watched it. I mean, Julia had been an actor in Chicago with mm -hmm. her husband, Brad Hall. So I, I, we had sort of, you know, crossed paths lightly. So I knew, I mean, everybody knew Seinfeld. It was in the zeitgeist, you know, it just was. So, so that's how it happened. Wow. And so now that you, once you booked it, did you, did you cram and watch a few episodes or you just were like, I know this, I, I have the, I have the script. I can just no, run this. Because, you know, if you're an actor, um, uh, you sort of know, and and those shows were really well written. Right, right. Really well written, and this one had been written by Larry. By Dave. Larry, yeah, Larry, Larry and Jerry got credit, but Larry, yeah. So. Yeah, and I just texted this old flame of mine, and I said, "I'm going to go do a Seinfeld podcast." Did you ever keep that sweatshirt I gave you? Because we all got like Seinfeld. Because yeah, I think I have it. I was like, "Why did I give it to it?" Um, but anyway. Um, we went in then the next day. Julia was not there because her father had had a heart attack. And so she was gone. Um, Jerry was the first you go in, you do a table read and then you get up and, and walk through it on the set on the various sets. And Andy Ackerman was the director who had been my first television director on Roseanne. So we went, hey, Rondi, remember me, Andy Ackerman? Wow. Yes, Andy, of course I remember you. And I mean, he's he's one of the top, behind Jimmy Burroughs, he's like one of the top old school television directors. And he's so good and he's so nice. And um, Larry was not there at that point. So, uh, uh, but Jerry was the first one there in the morning and the last one to leave at night. He knew everybody's name. He came up, shook hands with everybody. You know, Wendy Malick was in that episode, um, you know, and uh, he was like, hi, Rondi, thanks so much for doing this. Wendy, so great to have you. I mean, he, you know, he was, he was just a mensch. I mean, there's no other word for it. And it was very clear that he was, in his own sort of low key way, he was the one that was anchoring it and running it and making because, as you said, season six at that point. Wow. So you said, all right, so that was early on. You saw Ackerman, Jerry's kind of hobnob with everybody, and Larry was not there yet. When did Larry. Not there yet. No, no. When did he start the show? Because you were there for what, a week, I would gather? Yeah, it's like five days typically. And it depends on how they shoot. Like, you know, Mike and Molly, we would do a table read on Thursday, two hours. We come back on Friday, rehearse, new script, off for the weekend, come back on Monday. Then they would do, it got so they did pre shoots, which was anything that had like my dog or a car or outdoors or special effects or anything like that. So Seinfeld was much before that, you know, so they still wanted to do a lot of stuff in front of a studio audience. And, and so, uh, and it was took place in so many of those locales, you know, some of it they did out on the set. At, I mean, out in the studio lot there, all of the street scenes and all that stuff was all on the, on the, on the lot. 
so speaking uh speaking of mike and molly we just spoke with one of your old co-workers uh lou mastillo ah. um <laughs> What a guy he is, huh? Love Lou. Love Lou. 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 I love my Lou. Oh, that Buffalo <laughs> Italian. He was he was oh something. My God. And you know, everybody thought he was from Chicago. He says, What? They all think I'm from Chicago. And I said, Well, there's sort of Yeah, well, Western New York, it's you know, it's it's on its way to the Midwest for sure. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm curious, did you obviously that was you both were on Seinfeld, had you know, pretty Pretty remarkable, remember, memorable guest star roles. I just wonder if you guys ever. You, know, you lived in the same building as them. Technically, you lived. You both lived in the same building. Technically, yeah, you kind of had a similar role where, like, it was the apartment building. You both lived in the apartment building with Jerry, and he didn't really know who you were. So yeah, it was that's kind of a unique irony. Then you both ended up on Mike and Molly. I didn't. Now, as long as I've loan, known Lou and as much time as I've spent with him socially, I had no idea he did a Seinfeld. Wow. <laughs> I kid you not. My friend in Chicago, Michael, was in the puffy shirt in the Chinese restaurant. The puffy shirt from Chicago. Well, listen, uh, Seinfeld had a ton of. He uh, loved Chicago. LA. He lived in L.A. at the time. Who, so who was that? Michael who? Michael Mitz, M-I-T-Z. You need to get him. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's listen, on, from from John Capelos. He's on to, the phone in the background at the Chinese restaurant. He won't get off the phone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. George oh, wants right, to fight right. him. If something goes down, you got my back. That's a great yeah. We're living in a society, yeah. And I can't remember what he is in the, I mean, I've seen the puffy shirt, but I can't remember exactly where he is. But I saw that Chinese restaurant one several times, which is really, yeah. really funny. Well, I mean, it's just, it's interesting how, you know, there's so many great guest stars from Chicago. You mentioned Mike, yourself, Pat Finn, well, John Capelos. And Jim, Mark um, Carlo, Capelos, I knew. Uh, Haggerty, RIP. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, we, and obviously Julia, yep. Yeah. They would cast actors, actors that could do funny. Um, keep going, because I'll tell you what Larry David said to me when he finally showed up. Yeah. So, yeah, take us through the week. You, you did the table read, Jerry, and then all of a sudden Larry shows up. And we're rehearsing and you rehearse at various times, you know, depending on what the scene and because they were sort of vamping because Julia wasn't there yet, you know. And Ronnie, so, were you so yeah, take us so when you're there, this is a pretty incredible episode where the, the parents are both in the episode. I don't know if they were on set per se with you, Uncle yeah, Leo. Len Lesser, Len Lesser, oh Uncle Leo. god, I love and Liz. I, I used to see Liz all the time out here at the grocery store and the drugstore. She recently passed away. Yeah. Just, just a great lady. <laughs> the guy Leo, they were all so fabulous and so funny and so dear. And they treated every, I mean, you know, they were fabulous. So what do you, are you, are you watching those scenes kind of in the, in the crowd? Like tell us kind of how the, the experience well, is. Tip it, well, typically they can call you at different times or they will call you all, you know, like, okay, everybody needs to be here at nine 30. And then you're either assigned a dressing room or they'll have a trailer outside where you can go. Or, I mean, this is, way, way pre-COVID, where you could just go and hang out. And I would go and hang out in the bleachers, which is where the audience comes in to watch the tapings on show nights. And I started doing that because I thought, I want to watch this. I'm fascinated by this. And, you know, Jerry and George would be doing, you know, they have a, have all the locales set up side by side by side by side by side if you've never been to a TV taping. So, you know, you go in, there's Jerry's apartment and there's, you know, George's parents' house and then there's this and then there's that. And so they were doing something. It might have been with Jerry and George uh, I, maybe on the street or they were going through the script or something. And uh, I sat and watched Michael Richards for a good solid 45 minutes do his entrances through the door. Yeah. I, I've told that story to my acting class. I said, this guy 
And, you know, whenever I catch an episode and I see him, he looks like it totally happens on the fly. Yeah. Total I mean, throw. he was just inc- physically, and I had never seen, what was his show, Saturdays or? Fridays, yeah. Fridays, Fridays, Fridays day <laughs> off. Um, you know, but uh, he was such a physical comedian, and he he had carved out this niche within that ensemble of four actors i mean they were incredible they were like a symphony a mini symphony playing together they were just terrific all of them in their own individual way yeah and and, and you're 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 uh, they'll be it you know it's a mini arc but there is a character arc to your character oh. right in that first scene where you meet jerry all friendly give the kiss a hello help oh, me with my yeah. package oh, yeah. last scene you turn quick yeah. and the whole like nobody wants you here when you start screaming out. i mean it's so fun that yeah was- Larry David. The day Larry David came in, Andy Ackman said, okay, we're going to do a run through for Larry, you know, and he was right up in there right away. And I was like, because it's like, that's not typical. Usually the director is the director and the writer doesn't necessarily step in there. But I was like, Rondi, it's Larry David. Just, just remember, this is the whole, whole thing. And so and Jerry also had his hands full with a lot of stuff and all the schedules had kind of been thrown off because of Julia's family scenario and all that jazz. So everybody was just kind of pinch hitting with it. And television back in those days moved really, really, really fast. And, you know, you got 22 minutes or now it's like barely 20 minutes and a half hour sitcom, you know? So, um, we ran through the scene where I tell Jerry off at the end and Larry David came right up to me. He said, okay, you got a big theater voice and I want you to use it. I want you to turn around and just yell at him. And I went, but Larry, look at that face. And Jerry <laughs> went, I was like, I can't yell at that sweet face. Larry went, yes, yes, you have to, you must. I was like, okay. And, you know, I have a big voice naturally, but because I was doing theater, I had an extra big voice. Um, And so that was, you know, and I got done and Larry rushed down to me and said, that was great. That was great. And Jerry's reaction, Mary, oh, Mary. I mean, it's just, (laughs) it doesn't get better than that. So, yeah, you mentioned kind of knowing the the main four yes and larry you know larry at that time i don't know maybe he was in hollywood from the outside larry wasn't larry as we know him now with curb and all that stuff not at all no right but you knew he was kind of the driving force he was the creator and i i knew a few things about him i knew you know when you're when you enter into tv land as it were or la la land as I, <laughs> it is, I do, I have a sign on my wall that says La La Land. Um, it is your job as an actor to know what, what the deal is. Read the room, know who the players are, know what you need to do, do your job. You know, it's like anybody that would go on there as a guest star and sort of be a diva. There's no, and, and that goes back to the casting director because they know who the pros are. They know what they'll do. They know they can be directed. They know they can roll with the punches because a lot of them have done stage, you know? Yeah, that's a great point. And yeah, Hirschfeld, friend of the show, he kind of gave us kind of a deep dive into how he kind of picked certain actors and actors. So you mentioned that you never watched the show prior. Obviously, you're right. No DVR back then. You know, the tape and things was kind of annoying. Yeah. So did you, when you got the call from your, um, uh, when you got the call from your lawyer, your um, agent, agent um, yeah. did, so did you, did you go and kind of watch the show at all? Or you kind of went in, um, kind of went I in blind? Because it happened so fast. I mean, we had to be there the next day. Right. So I wow. got job and I had to be there the next day. So my, I, I think I segued as I want to do, but I mean, you look at a script. I mean, I literally had maybe six minutes sitting on the stairs, reading that script 
Yeah. So I look at, okay, okay, here, it, it's not any different than when you look at when you're doing a play or you're doing a movie and it's like, okay, why is this character here? What does this character do? You know, you don't really need to go into how she was when she was seven years old and whether <laughs> she's divorced. Or, you, you, no, no, no. It's, it's a sitcom. So you got to hit the boxes you got to make sense of it you got to hit the boxes you got to know where the jokes are it doesn't mean you lay on the jokes you play the truth you know i was always taught in college you play humor seriously and it will be funny that's perfect because your your opening your opening scene when when you're in the the hallway and you do the the look at the wall and the point, yeah, that right there is is what exactly you're talking about. You played that seriously, like, oh, yeah. okay, who am I talking? And it's so funny, and it's just a split second of just like, just a facial expression of the pointing, Jerry, like you found it, and then it's, I love, I just love that. And, uh, you know, that. the other thing is, re- and you know, listen, I'm a girl from the Chuck Lorre. Uh, he has put me in his stable, and I'm so lucky to have been there because I. I have learned, and Jimmy Burroughs, I mean, I say I got my sitcom uh, degree from Jimmy Burroughs because when we were doing Mike and Molly, he directed the first two seasons and he used to walk up and down. He wasn't even looking at us. He'd walk up and down, listening, 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 like it was music. And, you know, afterwards they go, honey, honey, throw that away. Da, 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 da. So it's um, it's technical, but it's got to be grounded. You know, working with Steve Martin also was another master class, you know, because uh, uh, and there's the old adage of dying is easy. Comedy is hard. You know, but if you have a good actor, you know, as serious as an actor can be, they can be really funny. Yeah, and your friend Lou, he mentioned that about Burroughs, that the consistency in those first couple of years of Mike and Molly were great. And then, you know, yeah. and whatever was, you know, they had guest directors come in. It just wasn't the same. I think that was kind of the beauty of Seinfeld is they pretty much had two directors, Tom Sharonis for the first half yeah. and an Ackman for the second. So, like, nothing really, really shifted. And there was a consistent voice always. There was, uh, did he tell you, maybe I shouldn't dish on this. You can. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Um, I was not in any of the episodes, but Jason Alexander was. Yeah, there. yeah, he mentioned. Yeah, he did mention that. Did yeah. he mention that? Yeah, and that was a clash between Jason and the creator showrunner, and it was Jason was not exactly right in how he approached it. I don't think. Also, given the personality of the other individual. So, you know, it's it's interesting because sometimes as an actor, you don't always know what's funny as a director. <laughs> Especially in television. You know. Exactly. So it, back to um, the kiss hello. First, I, I love the line, you know, uh, Jerry, I'm like Richard Dawson down there. What's your... Um, <laughs> What's your take on the kiss hello? Uh, you a fan of it? Uh, oh, do you? No, you sit- I mean, I come from theater where it's de rigueur. Everybody does it, but it's it was so you know. Anytime Jerry would get on one of those rants about something, I, mm. I defy anybody to not find something within there that that they go like, I know, you know, and I get it because that's also. When you don't know somebody, and it's just sort of, it's like air kiss. It's out here in Hollywood, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> you know, but I'm Chicago. So that's that's different, you know. No, it's interesting, um, the the um, the Chicago connection. We really, we really, uh, we love the Chicago connection. I know you were in the Steppenwolf Theater, right, with, um, is it Gary Sinise and... Um, oh, Gary Sinise, yeah. John Malkovich. John Malkovich, John Malkovich, yeah. You know, and then I would watch John on Frasier, and that's a whole different kind of comedy. You know, that's very, 
he was a blue collar guy and the writers on that. And it was very erudite with uh, Kelsey Grammer and David Hyde Pierce. But I mean, that again was a, they were like a team of, that was like an athletic team, that group of people. Yeah. And I know recently, I, I don't think it got picked up, but I know you're on how we, how we roll with, um, I believe some, uh, one of the producers, Mike and Molly may have been involved yes. in that as well. Right. But, um, I know yeah. Pete Holmes, I'm uh, I'm a fan of his comedy. Yeah, I was I was curious because you worked with Pete Holmes, and then you have Mike and Molly with um you know um, uh, Gar Gardell. Billy, Billy um, Gardell. Yeah, and yeah. and then Jerry, right? So three yeah. three stand up comedians who who got into the TV, and, and they're probably have some similarities and I'm sure they have some differences too, but I was curious, you know, what, what your experience was like with, with Pete Holmes and, and kind um, of, you know, seeing how the other two worked, maybe um, how, how that I, comic mind I works. I loved working with Pete Holmes. He was just a doll and, you know, uh, he was so self-effacing. He really felt like he's like, I'm a stand up. I'm, I'm dirty. And he was carrying a lot of it. He and Katie Holmes both. And, um, I said to them both, I go, you guys have great chemistry. You're great together. Listen, the, I could write a book this thick on reasons why television shows don't make it. Yeah. It's it's become a thicker volume these days uh, for a lot of reasons that aren't necessarily connected to anything about the talent. So, you know, it's uh, he worked so hard. He was very sweet. He he just, you know, he's somebody he's not done acting. He'll go back to acting. I think it was great for him to do it because he became more comfortable in that environment. He learned a lot, I think, from, you know, he was surrounded by people that had done a lot of television. And um, and Katie, that was her first sitcom after doing, you know, Scandal which is like, and right. That's, like right. that's a hard trip. Yeah. Yeah. A whole other ball g- I mean, I did an episode of scandal and an episode of how to get away with murder. I was like, they cannot pay these people enough money in my estimation, you know? Right. So, um, Billy, uh, had done a few acting things. Um, he and Reno who played the uh, African-American cop on Mike and Molly, they had been in a TV series, I think with Ted Danson, he told me that story. And, uh, it got canceled and uh, Reno had to call his wife and say, send back that Viking six burner range. We can't afford it. You know? Oh man. Yeah. And, um, and they said to Ted, well, are you? he goes, Oh yeah, I get paid anyway. You know, and Billy said from that point onward, I knew, but Billy was ready to come back to the East and become a radio guy. I think when Mike and Molly happened and it was Reno who called him and said, man, I'm reading this pilot. This is you. This is your part. You got to get on your agent. You got to do it. You got to do it. And that was literally how it happened. Um, Jerry, I think by the time he reached season six, and I, I only have this opinion because I've gone back and watched some of his earlier ones. You can sort of see he's a little deer in the headlights, you know? Uh, yeah. Early on. Yeah, people have criticized him and they said, well, he only acts on his lines. And I'm like, you know, uh, number one, I don't agree with that. But Billy said to me about season two, he goes, you know what? I just listen and I watch. I watch and I listen. And I mean, Jerry was thrown into a very trippy juggernaut. You know, in a very short amount of time, you know. Right. And he was surrounded by three, you know, obviously incredible, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of bounce <laughs> off him. So it helped. It's incredible, but also <laughs> sort of like, is like, is there a spot for me in here? Right. But right. <laughs> well, that's also the unselfishness, too. I mean, it's named after him. He's totally. a co creator, but he let them kind of shine. And guest stars like yourself obviously shine as well. But see, um, that was how Jerry dealt with everything on that show, in my perspective. I, I got I got an odd question, but the pictures on the wall of everyone's faces, right? How, how did that? How, how did they handle that? Did he really just take a picture of everyone, just kind of like yeah. funnily and just like stick them all up and like, <laughs> like is it just like the one process, day they just pull you all aside? Back, I don't know whether they still have them now. Everybody's got phones and digitals, but it used to be they had non set right. camera and the prop guys because they're the ones that had to make it. So, you know, they might have taken a headshot of somebody, of an actor, 
or they might have just taken a picture and then they would develop it. And then, you know, you walk onto the set and there's everybody's pictures up in the wall. Was it uh, Mary or um, Julio who defaced J uh, Jerry's picture, do you think? <laughs> I think Julio. Yeah. Julio's funny. I mean, <laughs> oh my I like God. Julio. Right. It was like, hey, man. I mean, it was, you know, it's so funny because there's always one like Seinfeld in a building and then everybody gets, and that one gal who was with me, the kind of shorter, stocky gal. Joan. Yeah. Joan, yeah. I mean, we were just like, you know, and uh, so I think that happens all the time. In, in especially in New York and buildings, there's all these couple. Yeah, that kind of that takes me back to like my uh, grandparents' apartment building in the city. Just like you know, the two ladies, the, the, yeah. the guy. I mean, exactly. And, and Jerry's always kind of the antagonist, and Kramer just Kramer just always seems to be loved. You know, <laughs> everyone loves Kramer. I, hey, isn't this great? Everybody's getting along, and yeah. So. So that week, you mentioned kind of um, Uncle Leo was there. The parents were you like who you, who were you like getting lunch with uh, during that week? Wendy Malik, like kind of. Heard Ben Lesser was very great at lunch. Yeah, Wendy and I hung out a lot because she had not done that much television at that point, and uh, I don't think uh, she didn't seem like she had because just shoot me was much later, and and her other stuff was much later. She'd done guest stars, but. Um, but this is a big deal. I mean, both of us were like, oh, my God, we're on Seinfeld. You know, she was very enamored with my career because of doing theater. And she had always wanted to do theater. But she had been a model that segued into stuff, you know. And she was such a doll. She lived up in Topanga with her boyfriend. And the night that we wrapped, they were having a big party. And, and uh, it was just like pouring i mean like monsoon and she goes are you gonna are you gonna go to G it was jerry's deli over in studio city which is now closed because it had so many tomaine poisoning cases but that's where it was and um are you gonna go and i said you know i gotta be up early in it she goes me too would there be any way you could drop me off are you going over beverly Glen? and i go yeah i am that's the way i go over the hill and she goes oh great i'm gonna stay with my friends because they had closed the roads topanga canyon is like up in the mountains and you know she couldn't even get back to her house i said of course of course so i gave her a ride home and uh whenever you know, I'd be at some audition. Somebody said, oh, Wendy Malik said to say hi to you. And, you know, so it gets to be kind of a, a little club, you know, when you meet and you work with somebody and you get along. And she was so sweet because, of course, uh, um, Jason Alexander, like, glommed onto her right away. And he was bitching and bitching and bitching what they've done to our little show, our little show was this, and they're trying to do this and they're trying to do that. And she was like, well, I mean, you know, she was listening to him and she's like, well, <laughs> you know, and then she said, have you met Rondi? She's in Steppenwolf theater. And he was like, yeah, hi, hi. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And it was like George incarnate. Basically. I was like, I mean, I met him on a couple more occasions in stuff out here in LA and he was not like that at all, but for what, <laughs> whatever reason on that day well to be fair yeah uh, they uh i don't know they, his, character was, <laughs> his character is one of the best characters ever and they kind of uh, took him down a few notches in those later years but it's funny you mentioned the wendy malik thing it just actually reminds me of the show her asking you for a ride and i just remember in the episode with elaine she drops her off yes. three blocks yeah, <laughs> away from her house <laughs> Love that. Oh, the Leifer was the uh, receptionist. If you've ever lived in New York and you've had to go through that, you're like, what? You have a car and you're going to, and with ski equipment, no less either, which was, it was so funny. I mean, the, the brain, well, Larry David, you know, had so much to do with that, you know, and the other writers too. Yeah, just, just a brilliant kind of, as they always talk about it, like a, a homemade show. It just, it, I mean, you were there. You were there only once, but I mean, just you mentioned kind of working on Mike and Molly. It just feels like that kind of got bigger, and there were a lot of more people involved. Versus yes. like this yes. was just like Ackerman, David, Jerry, and like, yeah. Yeah. and obviously the, the great cast. I look blurry, or is that my eyesight? 
That's my eyes. I think it goes in and out a little bit when you um, get animated. Yeah, because it's a not maybe not autofocus or something. You might be able to change that setting, but I don't want to. No, I don't want to do it. Yeah, um, it's probably because I don't typically use this uh, auxiliary camera. You got that fancy camera. It's okay. It's good to have soft filter when you're my age. It's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like, I know you had mentioned you hadn't seen the show, um, prior to your audition, but from just talking to you, it sounds like you have watched it since, oh. um, and, and seem to be a fan. So that's always great to hear, um, you know, from, from our guest stars when they kind of have their, you know, you've been bringing up a lot of, uh, references and things like that. So, um, I'm guessing you became a fan a little later on after your appearance. I'm yeah. sure you must've been recognized. Um, we always like to hear kind of the, Here's almost like the, the Seinfeld story. pop, you know, where it's like, oh my gosh, you're on Seinfeld. The next day you're recognized on the street from it or something yeah, like that. Here's a story. When they first started showing television shows on planes and I was flying from LA back to Chicago and I was just sitting there and there was, a, I was on the aisle seat and there's a guy across from me and they say, and coming up Seinfeld and they show the little thing. And I'm like, oh my God. and I, not, I hit this guy. I'm like, he had his earphones on. He was like watching. I go, I'm in this. He was like, what? I go, I'm in this. He goes, you are not. I go, yes, I am. And he takes his head. Off. He says, if you're in this, I'm going to buy you a drink. And then you're going to tell me the story the rest of the way to Chicago. <laughs> and that's exactly what we did. It was so fun. <laughs> wow. That's great. Um, so what are you, what are you up to these days, Rondi? Anything you want to plug or uh, I know you, you mentioned you're doing a little bit of teaching. I have taught, but I haven't done it recently. You know, it's like uh, uh, the last thing, when was the last thing I did? I can't even remember. It had to be a Chuck. Oh, I, I was on Be Positive, Chuck Laurie's show, Be Positive. I played Linda Lavin's sister. You know, Mr. Laurie is so great because if he has something that he knows I can do, he will call me. And I'm really just an incredibly lucky girl. You know, and I did the finale episode of Mom and I, I you know, picked up how we roll because Mark Gross had been on Mike and Molly. And so I'm just really, really lucky. I mean, I drive my agents nuts sometimes because I just, if I read something and I don't think it's any good, I just, I go, I don't want to, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it. And then the stuff I really want to do, I never get. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I think you've, you've earned the right to be picky. I mean, you've had a, just an incredible oh, career right, yeah. from uh, obviously your days in Chicago and a theater to, to being on all the shows we love, especially Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mary. We uh oh, Mary. Mary. That's a quote from some old movie. Which Oh I, really? Yeah. Because I, I bet you're right. Yeah. Oh Mary, Mary. And I don't <laughs> whether it was Cary Grant. I mean, I I think it was Larry that said that, that gave Jerry that, or maybe Jerry started doing it, you know, and I was kind of like, which is sort of I used it as to turn around and be like, what the hell? You know, um, but it's a throwback reference to, or maybe, you know, something from a 1930s movie or something. Yeah, well, the, the delivery was great. And, you know, your response, nobody wants you. I mean, just unforgettable stuff. But, uh, Rondi, we, we can't thank you enough for kind of taking a trip down memory thank lane with so us. Much. Thanks great. for inviting me. And I'm so glad we conquered the tech demons along <laughs> Yeah, the way. No, no biggie. I so only went fun. out of focus really bad at the end, which is sort of my life story. So that that's okay too. You know. Ronnie, this you was guys. Thank, thank you, Ronnie. So this was so thanks great. So much. You too. Take care. All the best. Thank you have a great okay. night. Okay. Bye bye. Cheers.